So let me tell you why community is so vitally important to me. Way back when, January 14th of 1996, that's when I gave my life to Jesus Christ. But within 24 hours, the only friends I had were my parents, my PlayStation, and my Bible. It wasn't that my friends uh, that I had at the time were rude, it's just that they respected my relationship that I had made for Jesus Christ, and they decided to go and have the relationship they wanted with their friends. So what I did uh, is I committed to the scriptures, I committed to this relationship with God, but within six months, I started to find some other believers that believed in Jesus Christ and wanted to live that life in the same way that I did. I committed to those friends and we began to grow. When it comes to community, when it comes to being a part of a community of faith, what happens is you grow spiritually and you're also held accountable. As the book of Proverbs says in chapter number 27, uh, iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. I really encourage you to make community something that you seek out intentionally because it will help you grow in your faith in Christ. Community happens and is formed when people love Jesus, they love others, and they're not afraid to jump out of their comfort zone. It's people being committed to Jesus and committed to each other to see great things happen. What you experienced at Soul Survivor is not an event, it's a way of life. And so you don't have to wait for another year to experience Soul Survivor. This is something that you can recreate in your own quiet time amongst your family and friends and something that can be a part of you all year long. So yeah, as you saw, that video is based on community, which is what I'm going to be talking about today. So I was looking up like definitions of community and basically the, um, the answers I got were like a group of people or live, um, group of people living in the same place or having a particular characteristic in common, something in common, feeling of fellowship with others, feeling of belonging. So yeah, basically being around people who you share the same views and I guess you could say this is a community. So as Tim Ross said, he, we all have a date when we became Christians, mine's 11th of October, uh, coming up three years. And yeah, I guess you could say I was quite a popular person before I became Christian, um, had a lot of friends, but as I became a Christian, people stopped not liking me, but they didn't share the same views as me. So um, yeah, one of my friends actually, because she has a lot of gay friends and I don't believe in that, obviously. She once actually told me to go kill myself because I said I didn't accept it. But we're still friends to this day. It's just we don't share the same views. But we still, we've got other things in common. So when our friends stop believing in the same thing, it doesn't mean we have to lose them. Um, they can still love us and we can still love them because obviously Jesus loved us even when we didn't share the same views as him. Um, but yeah, what happens when you come to this point where you become a Christian and then you feel like you don't have anyone left? Luckily, I didn't come to that point, but some of us may have. Um, you still become a Christian, you come to church. I came to church, I was like walking, I was like, oh, who, who should I start talking to? Who would be the best person for me to like grow? Um, so I actually, I remember the first time I came to church, I actually saw Jay and I kind of felt this, I was like, do you know what? I feel like she will be great. And I actually chased her for months. You have no idea. <laughs> she just didn't see me. And it was actually at my baptism when she first actually knew who I was. Um, but yeah, like Pastor David took me on. Wade took me on. He taught me the sound desk and all of that. And then Jim took on afterwards. But yeah, um, that's how I kind of started. I was like, God, I didn't even say God show me. He just kind of showed me different people. Like I remember Steph and Paula, they were like in charge of the youth then, so I grew with them. So we start going to church as baby Christians. We don't know who, who to go to, what to say, what, anything, to be honest. And then we start to get involved, got involved in the sound team. I started to hang out with them a bit more. And then eventually we start forming like these cliques, like groups of people who we join and we like stay with them and we don't want to go to talk to them. We sit at our tables down in the coffee bar. We sometimes don't really go to certain people. And then we start to not 
not like certain people, but we're just like, actually, I don't want to be with that person. Uh, we prefer not to hang around those people. Um, and that's when everything sort of starts to divide. Like, if you... This is probably not a great thing to see, but sometimes when you go into a coffee bar, you actually see the different groups of people. And, like, obviously we all merge, but there are flips. And so the scripture I've chosen for today is actually 1 Corinthians 1, verse 10. And it says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, and that they... Um, bleh but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. So I've got the key parts of that scripture. And the first part is all of you agree with one another. So you don't have to literally agree. If one of you agree, if one of you thinks something and another person doesn't agree with it, you don't have to like, oh yeah, yeah, that's so true. No, I don't believe you at all. But you don't hate someone because they believe something. Like if I, if my friend was a Christian, but she still thought gay people were right to hang around with and I didn't that doesn't mean oh I can't I can't love you because of that um so this ag agreeing with everyone creates oneness and we all are one community there are no if we all agree with each other we don't not like someone because their views may be different it brings the people closer together brings community closer together makes other people want to join in and you see more people coming in, you see more people joining the groups, and then it's just a nice place to be. So another translation I got was live in harmony with each other and all speak the same thing. So I actually like that word harmony. It's, it's nice. It's just, yeah, you, just, you feel like you belong when you're with your community. So when you're in church, you feel like you belong. You want to stay there longer. You don't want to go home straight after church. Oh, my gosh, I've had enough of all these people. I'm going home now. Um, and the next part I've got is uh, no divisions among you. So don't let differences come between you. Talk through. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I'm quite ill today. Um, don't let your differences come between you. If someone is interested in one thing someone, and then you're interested in another, go talk to that person. Find something that you've got in common. Don't let differences separate you and form clicks. Clicks are not good. Um, perfectly united in mind and thought is the last part. Despite differences and disagreements, come together. We all praise the same God. God is above all of us. Jesus died for all of us, not just one, not just one race, one group of people, English people, Polish people, any people. We all believe in the same God. We believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again for all of us. We celebrate Christmas, Easter, all of those celebrations because of Jesus. So why does that mean that we have to treat other people differently if Jesus Christ didn't? Because we're supposed to grow up to be like Jesus. We're supposed to grow when we come to heaven's gates. We're not supposed to be completely away from the image of God. We're supposed to be the same, really. Obviously, we can't get there, but we can try our best, so... A good place to start is believing that everyone is equal. Everyone deserves to be loved. Even if they've done something terrible to you in the past, you've got to forgive it. Like this summer, me and my mum's relationship fell apart massively, but I still love her. She may, I don't know if she's still a follower of Jesus, but I still love her despite that. So yeah, loving everyone and treating all of the body the same. Mind. One mind, one thought, and one purpose. So yeah, we all have the same purpose, and that is to get to heaven. So yeah, I wrote down here, living with other Christians in Christ is important because it allows us to communicate, prevents isolation, which is another preach that actually um, Tim did, and it's saying that God doesn't allow himself to be enough. We think that we can just follow God and just be friends with him almost and we don't need other people but actually he doesn't let himself do that he makes us need other people so one of the quotes he used was vertically he's all we need horizontally he made himself not enough because he designed us to need people so obviously he can supply everything for us but there is we need people 
we need to go to people, we need to ask them for advice. And even though God can give the best advice, he doesn't allow us to do that. And I actually learned that since I became a Christian, actually. I've learned that God gives the best advice, but sometimes I'll go to him, I'm like, God, I need help with this. And he's like, he doesn't give me an answer. And I go to someone like Jay, like Jim, like Wade, like PD, and they give me the answer I need, and I can sense straight away it's from the Holy Spirit. And so we need people to build us up, to give each other advice, help each other when we're struggling. Because God is there, but he's not physically here. And that's what I believe. I believe he's always here, but he's not here as a person. He's not standing right here next to me, but he is here inside every one of us. And he speaks through other people. And we need other people to help us. Like when, this is probably the biggest thing that's ever happened, but when my family decided to move away, I actually, I went to him and I was like, God, speak to me. And all he said was, you're not going. That's all he said. I prayed for hours and hours and hours every day. I was laying in my bed. And I was like, God, what do I do? He was like, you're not going. I was like, that's not helpful at all in this situation. I need something. I need an action plan. Just in case something bad happens, God, give me an answer. He was like, you're not going. So I actually started reaching out to people. I formed this little prayer group, and they would give me advice, and I could tell it was from God, but it was more than you're not going. So yeah, we need people as well as God because they help sharpen us which is one of the scriptures that he used it's Proverbs 27 verse 17 as iron sharpens iron so one person sharpens another so to me that means that like what I said about agreeing you don't have to literally agree with people you can disagree with people you can say actually I think what you're thinking is wrong and I think that's going to take you down the wrong path I think you need to change your mindset, but I'm not going to stop loving you. I will help you get over this. If someone has an addiction, you don't go, well, good luck sorting it out then. You help them out. People, we need each other. And even if you don't like someone, someone comes up to you saying, I need help with this. You're like, mm, I don't like you. But God even says, pray for our enemies. Even if they've done something to you, you can still pray for them. You can still help them. So yeah, we sharpen one another. This, can be, this links to house groups and like other communities that we have. You go to a house group, you share what's happened that week. Like, yeah, I've been blessed financially. Actually, my dog died this week. Like, it's, everything helps us grow. So we share our strengths with each other, and we're all rejoicing with each other. So we sit in, in our little house group, and everyone's happy for that person. And we pray, and we congrat like, not congratulate, we... No. We say thanks to God. (laughs) I can't think of the word. We say thanks to God for blessing that person and building that person up. And that person is one step closer to being with God and they're happy and everything's great. And then the next person comes and they're like, actually, I've had a really bad week. And everyone, everyone can feel their pain because they're all so close. And that's what we should aim to be. So when someone comes up and actually says... I've had a really bad week. Everyone feels for them and everyone starts praying. And that helps build community as well. It builds us up. And like, sorry if you don't want to, if you don't want me to bring up, but like when Jay's brother died and when Mark died, everyone came together and everyone felt, felt for the people that were struggling at that time. And it was so encouraging to just see the whole church come together. And like the money that was raised for the jump, it was incredible. Everyone from church donated and everyone came together. But it shouldn't be at times of struggle when we come together because that's the times where it happens most. It should be all the time. It should be when people are happy, when people have got a new job. Everyone should be congratulating them, thanking God. should be coming together at those times as well. Um, So yeah, as Tim said, we need three things to keep a community going, and that's to love Jesus, which I'm sure everyone here does love Jesus, 
We need to love him with all our hearts. We need to love one another as well. We can't come into church loving Jesus and like, oh, I love you, Jesus, but I hate everyone here. Like, it just can't happen. And you need to step out of your comfort zone. So when you see someone's crying during worship or crying during the word, you, and you just want to sit there, you're just like looking at them. You go up to them, you're saying, actually, I felt God say that he loves you. And I know you're not having an easy time right now, but he's here for you and I'm here for you and I want to do anything I can do to help. But that all happens through commitment. We have to be committed to one another. We have to be committed to Jesus. And you have to be committed to stepping out of your comfort zone. You can't one week come out and say, oh, do you know what? I'm going to prophesy for 10 people today. And then the next week saying, I don't want to talk to anyone. I'm just going to praise and pray and listen to the word and all that. You have to be committed. And that's when you see great things happen. When you see people come out. Like the amount of people I've gone up to and said, God loves you today. Some of them have been like, yeah, I know that. And some people have actually been like, do you know what? I really needed to hear that today. And it, come, it helps us come together. And I'm going to keep saying that. We need to come together as one. It's like when you go to a big event, like Soul Survivor, Big Church Out, David's Tent, all those. You go there mainly because you feel like you belong there. Like, you feel like, every, like you're not judged by anyone. You don't know anyone, but you still feel like everyone there loves you. And you just want to stay there, you don't want to go. And then you come back here and you're like, back to everyday life. But we can bring those feelings or those thoughts we get at those events and we can bring them back here because we don't need a big preacher like Mike Pulavachi or whoever, or like big worship leaders like Bethel and stuff like that. We don't need them to feel like uplifted and all that. We can do that here. Like when Rachel comes up, you can feel more uplifted than when Mike preaches. And you don't... (laughs) Yes, Rachel. (laughs) But yeah, we don't don't need some great people of God because we're all great people of God and we're all serving the same God. We're not... It's not like like stairs that some people are higher than the other, like higher than others... We're all in the same place. We all get knocked back massively at some points. We all get like, we'll grow wings at some points and feel like we're up in heaven. But that doesn't mean that just because someone's higher than someone else doesn't mean you can't help the people that are lower than you. They all, we're all in the same boat. Some of us may feel like we're sinking. Some of us may feel like we're winning the race, but we're all the same. We all need to come together and humble ourselves because actually, when you humble yourself, you realize that, that people are struggling more than you. And you're not actually, oh, poor, poor old me, I'm going through this at this moment in time. You actually pray with each other, help one another, come together, love one another. You text each other during the week, like, oh, how's your day been today? I know you've been struggling. I saw your post on Facebook. You said this. Communicate with one another. Don't just see each other on a Sunday. Because what's the point in that? That's like saying... Um, church isn't on a Sunday, it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday too. But it comes with people as well. So if I just saw Ian and Rachel on a Sunday and then didn't talk to them for the rest of the week, well, what's the point? You want to build friendships, build relationships, or else you're going to come on a Sunday, you're like, actually, I don't know that person at all. I don't know anything they're going through. Yeah, you may have them on Facebook and all that, but it's still not the same as having a personal connection. So actually, I would like to encourage everyone to just talk to someone today who you haven't talked to in a while or before, maybe. But yeah, coming together, living in the community, it's a way of life. Big Church Out, David's Tent, Soul Survivor Faith Camp, it's a way of life. It's not just an event that happens on a weekend once a year. Pray for each other all the time. Worship together all the time. Love each other all the time. Church is full of people who need prayer. (laughs) As some people say, church is a hospital for broken people. So I guarantee if you look anywhere, there is probably someone right now who is going through a hard time. So if you go up to someone saying, do you need prayer? They're probably not going to say no. So yeah, we need to encourage each other, prophesy for one another. People need words of encouragement all the time. 
people need to hear like God's got your back God's got this oh, actually I see this picture of this for your life even if it doesn't happen straight away it's going to happen at one point it's a seed that you're planting and you're encouraging other people so yeah but you can't love Jesus you can't step out of your comfort zone for Jesus but you can't do that without loving other people you have to you have to have all three it's just not possible try I'd love to see somebody try and do one of one of those without the other like you just have to and there may be people that you love more than us but Jesus loves us all the same so yeah I'd just like to encourage you all to step out of your comfort zone talk to someone you haven't talked to in a while pray for someone you haven't prayed for in a while maybe even ever go see the visitors that haven't been here before tell them that you are here for them you don't know them at all but you are actually here for them and yeah just come together